Hey YouTube, welcome to the show. Today I want to talk about the cheap nickel metal hydride batteries you can get off eBay. BTY 3000s to be specific. 3000 meaning 3000 milliamp hours according to the seller. I saw these on eBay, eight for six dollars. And I thought, man, that's the kind of bargain I need to get my hands on. And I figured the capacity was exaggerated. But even if they exaggerated 50%, which would be outrageous, that's still a 2,000 milliamp hour battery for 75 cents, and that's still a good deal. So I ordered some. When I got them, I took them out of the package and immediately noticed they seem light. I didn't have anything to compare them with. It's been a while since I've used rechargeable batteries, so I didn't know for sure. Put them in the charger. It only took like 10 or 15 minutes for them to charge. And I thought, well, they must come pre-charged. You know, some of these nickel metal hydrides do. So I went ahead and put them in my wireless microphone. Started shooting some video. Bam! 15 minutes later, no audio. Dead batteries. Uh-oh. So I did a little math. Figured out I may not have got the bargain I thought I was getting. Then I started reading some reviews on eBay. I didn't do that before I spent my six dollars. I just saw the four star average and figured it's okay. Uh, most of the reviewers love these things. Five stars. The heading of one five star review said, and I quote, works great. I recharge them overnight and then use them in my TV remote control all day. Well, that's not really the standard I want for my nickel metal hydride batteries running a TV remote all day. But mixed in with these glowing five-star reviews were some one-star reviews that talked about things like capacity and how bad these things suck. I even wrote my own review, but somehow it never showed up. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I might have done something wrong. But at this point, I'm getting irritated. But I'm also getting curious. I want to know about these BTY batteries. So I bought a LaCrosse Smart Charger because it can do a capacity test on these AA and AAA rechargeable batteries. And just to make sure I didn't get the odd bad set of BTY batteries, I ordered two more sets from two different sellers on eBay. When all this stuff arrived, I did a test on each set of the BTY batteries, and they averaged 328 milliamp hours. The best set averaged 336. <clears throat> that would have been a shocking result if I hadn't already tried to use the things, but I did, so I, it wasn't. And I still needed some usable batteries, so I'll go on Amazon, order a set of Amazon Basic 2400s, 8 for $20, and a set of ELB 2800s, 8 for $14. I'll put links to this stuff in the description. Then I started testing. I mentioned earlier that the batteries seemed light, so I weighed them. I weighed the BTYs, the ELBs, and the uh, Amazon Basics. And sure enough, the BTYs are very light. Uh, they weighed 14.1 grams. The ELBs are 28.3 grams, which is a little more than twice the weight of the BTYs. The Amazons are 29.6 grams, which is even heavier than the ELBs, although the capacity is less, slightly less. But at 14.1 grams, there can't possibly be much nickel metal hydride in those BTY batteries. Whatever the hell nickel metal hydride is, I don't know. But there's not much of it in those batteries. Some of these reviewers said that these batteries get better after you break them in. That is, charged and discharged several times. So to give them every possible chance to be good, I charged and discharged them until they stopped getting better. And some of them did get better, but others didn't. You can see in the final test, there's a fairly wide range of capacities within one set. The ones with higher capacities got better, the one with the lowest capacity didn't. I didn't do this with the ELBs and Amazons. I made this side-by-side -side video to graphically demonstrate how little capacity these have compared to the others. 
The BTYs took about four hours to complete this whole thing. The ELBs and Amazons took 25 and a half hours. Well, these are some really bad batteries. They're worthless. I wouldn't use them in anything. Even a TV remote because I don't want to charge my TV remote batteries every night. They average 354 milliamp hours for the broken inset. These guys only exaggerated the capacity of these things by 847%. That's not too bad, is it? The people selling these things have to know that they're not selling what they say they are. And in my book, a bunch of small frauds add up to a big fraud. I'm pretty sure people used to go to jail for such as this. But I think now it's so widespread that I don't think anyone's even trying to stop it. It's just like credit card fraud. How can someone possibly steal your credit card information, then order stuff and have it delivered to their house and not get arrested? I don't know how it happens. We know where they live. I don't know. Oh yeah, there were other batteries in this test too. The, I think the Amazons and the ELBs are great. That is, they seem to be a good value, which is normally what I'm looking for when I buy something like this. The Amazon actually has more capacity than it advertises, and the ELBs have a little less. However, the ELBs do have more capacity than the Amazons, and the Amazon is $2.50 each, and the ELB is $1.75. So I'm an ELB guy. And I know Panasonic makes some high-priced batteries that the battery nerds get all slobbery over. I've never tried them, so I don't know. But I seriously doubt they're as good a value as the ELBs. And one last thing. eBay has a problem with bad sellers. They're letting these people misrepresent this worthless junk and don't even seem to be trying to stop them. Obviously, the reviews I read are full of plants. Uh, there's no way anybody thinks these are good batteries. You know, eBay may be trying to stop them. I don't know. But if they are, they're not doing a very good job. I've been on eBay since it was called Auction Web, which is a long time, and I hate to see it go, but I think that's where it's headed. Hey, thanks for watching. Give me a like or subscribe or something for Pete's sake.